Hi everyone. So today we're doing Derby Day. There is a Derby at the end, if you guys don't remember. And we'll find out what the results of that is in a bit. I'm gonna use purple right now. And so this was our warm up. So if you have if you weren't in class, pause, do this, right? And then if you're stuck, uh, come look at the work. Uh, and if you remember, we have a four is equal to y minus five divided by three, and we're just solving for y. So solve each equation for y. So what we're gonna do is literally, it's like the, if the order of operations is how we simplify expressions, solving for x is kind of like undoing all that, right? So we're gonna kind of go in reverse-ish, okay? So if we notice right here, we do have, normally we would get rid of this minus five, but we do have this big uh, fraction bar, which I eat, divide. So that's kind of like uh, this, the, it's like a parentheses and an invisible parentheses around there. So we're going to have to get rid of this divide by three first before we get rid of the five. So how do we get uh, undo a divide by three? Multiply by three. So that's why we multiplied by three on both sides. Got to keep it even, right? If we just do it on one side, that's not equal, right? You just made it very unequal. So you just multiply one side by three, we have to multiply the other side by three. Um, and then you, um, so this what was what we call canceling out, uh, but it doesn't like become zero or anything like that. It's just a three divided by three, which is one. And so when, I, when it's one, and so one multiplied by y minus five, is just y minus five. And so that's why you don't see it. Um, so here, all we have left is y minus five, three times four is 12. <clears throat> From there, we wanna get rid of the minus five. So to undo a minus five, we would just add five to both sides. And then uh, we would get 12 plus five, which is 17. Um, the other way, if you want to think about it this way, because this is this should all be very reasonable and logical, right? So we're asking ourselves, well, what would y be? So that if we subtract five from it, we would get 12, like 17, right? 17 minus five, that would give us 12. You see, 17, right? Um, that's how that it should make sense like that. And if it doesn't, then you did something wrong. You either uh, did the wrong operation or something else is weird, or maybe you added it wrong. Um, that's uh, what one way to check, okay? And if I plug in 17 in for y, uh, we would get four. So for example, 17 minus five, that would be, what is it called? 12, 12 divided by three would give us back that four. All right, good. And then so for number two, same idea here, just because that's a one half does not mean that we treat it any differently. It's just a regular number. Um, if you'd like to change it to 0.5, because that freaks you out less, do that. Um, again, here, we're going to get rid of the divide by seven. So we're going to multiply both sides by seven. And then from there, we're going to be subtracting three. So you should get the answer of y equals one half. All right. Um, and take a look at these if you're confused. Um, so for number three, uh, again, same thing here. It's the same process. It looks exactly the same. So we're just multiplying both sides by 25. And then we're going to, so when we do that, when we multiply by 25, just remember this is like over one. You're just multiplying straight across. So 25 times negative three is negative 75. One times four is four. You do not multiply the 25 with both the numerator and the denominator. It doesn't work like that. Then basically you just multiply by one. You're not changing the value. You're not actually multiplying by 25 at that point. So we have 75 uh, divided by four, which are, this is negative 75 divided by four, which is negative 18 and three fourths. Or you can just pop that into your calculator and you get negative 18.75, um, either way is okay. And then uh, right here, if we're gonna be, we added 17 to both sides because we got rid of the minus seven, uh, minus 17. So that would be, that would give us a total of y is equal to negative 1.75. All right, and then uh, I said I would do number, um, what is it called? Number four, so I'm gonna just do number four here. So if you wanna try and do number four, cause you're like, okay, I'm feeling a little more confident now, try it out, okay? Cause you're never gonna know until you actually do it, okay? And maybe painful, but you can still, even if it's wrong, it's good for you to at least try it, right? Cause then you know, you could fix what your, miss, your, your thinking is, right? Because we don't always have the perfect thinking. We just need to adapt to it and modify it, right? And we just, all, we're always editing, always on editing mode. Okay, so. We're going to write down negative five over or nine over five is equal to y plus 31. And I'm serious. I'm just an average person. If I can do it, you can do it, right? Because I'm not a genius 110%. I 
I know sometimes it might look like it, but I'm not. <laughs> Totally not the genius. And so therefore, if I can know how to do this and I can learn how to do this, then you are more than capable of learning how to do this because you're an average person too, just like me, unless you're the genius. <laughs> In which case, then maybe you should do this video. <laughs> All right, here we go. So again, we're going to, we're looking at the why we do not need to care about this negative five over or negative nine over five, right? Because um, that's not where the why is. So the y's over here, we want to get y by itself because the whole point is to solve for y. What is y, right? Don't ask why. And then here we're dividing by negative eight. So opposite of that is multiplying by negative eight. So multiply by negative eight. And then um, go back to purple. And then here on the left-hand side, remember we're just multiplying the negative eight with the numerator with the top. So that's gonna be negative eight times negative five. <laughs> I keep on saying five. Negative nine, which is positive 72 over five is equal to the negative eight, negative eights just turn to one, right? They cancel out, what we call cancel out. Um, and that's gonna be y plus 31. And now we just need to figure out what this uh, 72 over five is. We'll figure that out, just give me a second. So we're gonna subtract 31 on both sides. Don't ask me why I'm going a little crooked here, but that's just how it goes. And so five goes into seven, one time remainder of two, so five goes into 22, four times remainder of two fifths. So 14 and two fifths, 14 minus 31. It's a big number. So that's gonna be like, I'm gonna think out loud here. So this is like 15, if I were gonna round it to 15, right? That'd be negative 31 minus 15, which is negative 16. And then, but it's not actually 15, it's 14. And so that's like, uh, 14 and three-fifths, or so 16 and three-fifths. I should probably check on my calculator just to make sure. I don't want to lead you astray. So 14, six going four. Yep, negative 16, yep, perfect. There we go, and that's my Y. And so that's what you should have gotten for Y. Happy days. All right, moving on, uh, learning targets for today. Uh, we are going to write uh, the uh, the y-intercept as an ordered pair. Also, explain the meaning of the y-intercept or the initial value, uh, given a context of the linear of the a linear equation, and write equations of lines in slope-intercept form. I don't know if we did number the second learning target as well in class, so we'll try it a little bit better this time. All right, moving on. So, if you look at the y-intercepts here, so what is the y-intercept? And if you have this packet then um, uh, highlight this part, if not write it down in your notes, uh, like in your notebook. So the y-intercept is the y-coordinate of the point where the graph, where a graph crosses the y-axis. Okay, you got y-axis, y normally labeled here for you. It's always the one that's uh, straight up and down, it's the vertical one. And where does the graph cross it? So if you're looking at this scenario right here, so this is time in seconds and this is the water level. So it looks like when, right when we started the time, right, the timer, or whatever this context is, uh, I was at, or somebody was at four and a half feet, the, or, or maybe not someone, uh, the, maybe the pool, right, was at four and a half feet, or maybe the, um, the river was four and a half feet above, um, that was the water level, right, uh, maybe it's rising, well, it looks like it's going down, so um, maybe it's, maybe we're draining the pool, I don't know, but it is definitely going down like that, right? And then uh, over here, we're looking at the y. So, oh, sorry, talked about this. The ordered pair is just zero because the x part is just zero here. And the y is a 4.5, it's four and a half up the y axis, right? So that's where this is. And if you remember, it's always gonna be the x first, then the y, good review. Uh, somebody had told me something about Pokemon XY and that's how they remember. So maybe that will help you. You don't ever say Pokemon YX, right? The Pokemon XY. So that's how that's gonna go. Um, uh, looking at number two, we're looking at the elevation above sea level and the time since noon in minutes. So right here at noon, because that means that zero minutes since noon, so which is at noon. So at noon, where are we at? So we are at negative 10 feet uh, below sea level. Okay, so that's where that would be. So this is definitely a low tide. And so this is gonna be zero and negative 10. So maybe if you are scuba diving 
then you would be 10 feet under the water, right? So feet, yep, it's in feet. And then once, and then you're, it looks like you're rising, 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 right? And then right here at, what is this, 10, uh, 10 minutes, right at 10 minutes, I've now hit that surface, right? So I'm now at sea level, okay? And then above there, uh, I guess I'm just rising, I'm a constant rising, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm holding on to a rope and it's pulling me up. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's figure out a situation that this would be in. All right, so that's what that would mean. And if this is the y-intercept, then think about what would this be right here? That's the x-intercept. Yeah, there's those two, right? Um, so those two are the intercepts, but right now we're just looking at the y-intercepts. And the y-intercept, we would just write that as zero, uh, negative, five, negative 10. And then if you look at this one right here, um, this one, you're like, well, here's, and you see how we elongated it. So this one, if we were to extend this line, right, which it does because there's an arrow, that's why there's an arrow. We're like, it would go, it would be way above 45, like maybe 90, maybe twice that, I'm not sure. We need a, an equation to kind of help us out with that, but we don't have an equation or well, whatever that time is. So it looks like it says distance from home. So we're very, very far away from home. And, uh, and each minute we're traveling a little bit closer, right? Um, and so if we were to look at like, maybe like right here, if I don't go cross right here, oh my dear. So at 80 minutes, right? At 80 minutes, how far are we from home? We would be 15 miles from home. We're far away from home still, but it's closer than we were at the beginning, right? When we first started off, maybe we were at grandma's house. Maybe we were visiting somebody else or we were going on vacation, we're coming back. I don't know. Um, so that's what this would mean. Obviously, this is not indicative of real life because this would mean that we're on a freeway going at the same speed, constant speed, going back home. But, yeah, but you know, traffic, especially in Washington. All right, moving on. Okay, so we're gonna just uh, X nay on this one. Uh, and here we go. Here's a slow. Okay, so this one we are on page 124. So on 124, uh, I just wanted to show. Um, on a table, how we would find the slope, right? And normally when we find a uh, difference, uh, common differences, we would look at these right here. So we would go, oh, 10, 10 to six. So we're like, oh, we're subtracting four. So we're uh, going down by four. I notice that it is decreasing. Normally, if you wanna find common difference, we take the six and we subtract the 10. So six minus 10, which would be negative four. Either way you wanna think about it, it's the same thing, right? So, um, so make sure it is negative. But that is not the common difference, right? That's not the slope, right? Because if you notice on the left-hand side, in order for there to be a common difference, uh, this has to go up by ones. This is not going up by ones. It's going up by fives, right? So if you look right here, this is a difference of the y's. So if you look right here, the slope, remember I said again, it's the difference of y's. How much is the y changing over how much the x is changing, right? So the y is changing by negative four, it's going, down by four every single time. And then the X is changing by going up four, uh, up five every time. So it's gonna be like this. So this, the slope here is negative four fifths. Just like that, negative four fifths. Okay, and then, um, oh, did I miss that part? Oh, here it is. I was like, I swear I missed a part. All right, I went a little bit too fast. Um, and remember the slope intercept form, that is uh, what we called yesterday, uh, F of X is equal to AX plus B. Right, this is the more formal way, um, uh, AKA you may have learned this in middle school or you should have learned this in middle school. Hopefully you were paying attention. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, Y equals MX plus B. Uh, remember where M is the same as this A right here, which is the slope or the, what we would have called the common difference, right? And the B is going to be our Y intercept. All right. Um, so knowing that, so knowing the y equals mx plus b, so here we go, y equals mx plus b. So y and our x are always gonna be variables. We're always gonna have that. Um, and so if we're given the slope, which is negative five thirds and the y intercept, which is our b, right? So this right here is our b. So we can replace the y intercept and the slope in order to get the equation of the line. So y equals negative five thirds x plus b. So do you see, instead of M, we put in negative five thirds. Instead of B, we put in a plus eight, 
right? If this was a negative eight, then it would be a minus eight, okay? And then uh, same thing here, exact same idea. See how this is ne uh, negative 2.5? Um, that's why this is a minus 2.5, because technically this would be a plus negative, like uh, 6.2x plus negative 2.5. But we know that adding a, a negative is the same thing as subtracting. Or if you didn't know that, now you do. Okay, and so that's what we just call it. We just say minus. Um, and then for C, we said, uh, okay, we wanted to write the equation now. So if you look at 619 and zero negative 35, and notice right away that this is our B. We're given the y-intercept. So we know I put the uh, negative 35 here or the minus 35 here. But we don't know what the slope is, but we can find the slope, right? Because we have two points. So we're going to use the slope formula. We think about it. Remember, it's the change of y. How much is the y changing? It's going from 19 to negative 35, right? So we're going to go 19 minus the negative 35, right? And then 6 minus 0. So 6 minus 0, so that's going to be 6. And remember, subtracting a negative, same thing as a plus. And that's going to be 19 plus 35, which is 54. So 54 divided by 6 is 9. So that's our slope. And that's why we put that in there, right? Practice, think about it. Mathia, yeah, practice. All right, so we did a little bit of derbying. So here we're at the derbying. Okay, we got to, um, uh, I don't know if you know, but this was a base, this is a derby. Uh, we're doing it for a class, class. Uh, that's the scenario. And apparently Jamie is always winning, like he's always won. Okay. And, um, so we have Liza here. Liza's having issues because, you know, um, she has a flat tire. But here is our A, B, C, and D people. It would be great if you could just read them and see, like, who do you think is going to win? And then we'll predict it. I don't know. Uh, maybe, probably not uh, C, because maybe that's half as fast. Or maybe it could be D, because it looks like I'm going to go pretty fast, because in four seconds, I could catch up to Liza. Liza was like, you know, pretty far ahead. So maybe it's D, but we'll find out. Or maybe it'll be B because they're going twice as fast as Liza. But Liza wasn't going that fast to begin with. So maybe that's not that fast. We'll find out. But anyways, um, so, so far we got uh, Liza here. So, so Liza rides one meter for every four seconds uh, because she has a flat tire. And because of that, maybe because of that, she gets a 10 meter head start. So she's over here. Notice the distance right here. And this is the distance I, uh, I should say from uh, the starting point. I'll just say from the start. I don't have, I don't have the ability to do that. And this is the time in seconds. So this is like at zero is like when you, uh, you know, say go, okay, ready, set, go. And then that's what's gonna happen, right? So Liza is starting here at the 10 meter mark. So she gets at the head start, right? And she's going, it says one meter for every four seconds. So we're going up one meter for every four seconds. So this is, so at the four second, at the fourth second, fourth second, she's only traveled one meter. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's very, very little actually. This is very slow that she's probably not having a very good time right now. She's like, come on. So I'm doing this. I'm just going to continue that because her pace just stays the same. Uh, if you know anything about go-karting, like, a long time ago, go, go karting, you just, you don't really, you just kind of depend on your, um, the hill, and like how fast your, your go kart can build up speed. And so we're going to go one every four seconds. We're going to assume no acceleration here. It's just going to be constant the whole time. Let's just pretend. Okay. So one every four seconds, I label that Liza. With Jamie, uh, Jamie rides two minutes per second. Okay. This is probably why they're getting, uh, uh, first place every time. Two minutes per second seems pretty fast and starts two seconds after the start of the dart, dart, a derby, the derby, right? This is, he's very confident or maybe it's a she, I don't know, Jamie, uh, whichever way you want to interpret that. So, so right when they say go, he's just like, do, 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 what? <laughs> so after two full seconds, right? Um, so not only do people get to start ahead, Jamie's just waiting, right? Two seconds. Right, so what would it have been? So instead of like, what if we had them start on time, but start like behind the start line, right? So we're going to, uh, oh, I should have talked about the slope first. So again, it's two, two meters per one second, two meters per one second. OK, 
Okay, so that's how that's gonna go. So we're gonna kind of backtrack it, kind of see, well, what would it have been if they started at start, right? So we go two down and one to the left, two down, one to the left, and they would have started at negative four. Okay, so what does that look like here? So their y-intercept is at negative four. Their slope is two, it's two over one, right? Two meters per one second, which reduces to two, two meters per second. And then our formula, our, our equation would be y is equal to 2x minus 4. Okay, that represents Jamie. And then we're going to go to A. Now we get to get to A. And uh, it says, well, you drive your go-kart three meters every two seconds and uh, start at the starting line. The derby is 25 meters long. That's good to know because we want to know where we're going to stop. So that's why we drew this line right here because this is the finish line. Question is who finishes first? Uh, who is going to win the derby? We're not there yet. So we're starting right here at zero zero because that's where the starting line is. So at time zero, we're at zero meters from the starting line, and so we're going to go three meters uh, for every two seconds. So three meters for every two seconds. You continue that all the way across there, and notice there's something really big happening right here, right? We all met. They all met. So right at this point, they're all side by side. So some are coming from behind, some are like already ahead. And right at that point, they meet, right? So there are three cars there meeting. I wish I brought cars, should have brought cars, but oh well. And then they're gonna, right at that split second, they're gonna meet and then they start going different, uh, going, they're at different uh, distances, right? They're not gonna meet anymore after that. All right, so this is A right here. This is A, that's what we labeled it A. So our, um, our driver A, the slope is, remember we went three up and what was it two? Two seconds, yeah. So it's gonna be three over two. And then our y-intercept, remember we started at zero. So it's just gonna be y is equal to three over two x. Technically you could put in a plus zero, but then what is three over two x plus zero? It's three over two x, right? We don't need the zero, so we just leave that out. Um, and then let's go for B. B is purple. Purple, it says you get a six meter head start. This is good. So six meter head start. So we're gonna start right here at six and drive twice as fast as Liza. So remember Liza is going one meter for every two, four seconds. So twice as fast would be one meter for every two seconds, right? Twice as fast. So one meter for every two seconds. One meter every two seconds. You see how it's a little bit more steep? Ooh, it looks like right here, at this, at this juncture right here, we're gonna meet A, contestant A, whoever that is. So I'm gonna keep on doing this. Do we ever, yep, here we meet Liza right here. Ooh, we meet Liza, but that's not really a good thing, but I guess, because they were before us, so we caught up to Liza right there at the second, whatever that second is. But I don't think it's gonna be fast. It doesn't look like it's gonna be fast enough, right? So there that one goes, just like that. Oh, oh, I should label that B. So this is B right here. All right, so our for B, our slope is half, uh, twice as fast as Liza, which is one out of two, right? One over two. And then the y-intercept is at six. So that's gonna be y is equal to one half x plus six. So far, Jamie looks like Jamie's winning. Let's see, maybe C will do it. So C says, ooh, you drive half as fast as Jamie. Ooh, that's not good. But get an eight meter head start. So let's see if that's good enough. And the question is, who's gonna come in second? Oh, here, the who's gonna finish last? Eek. All right, um, so let's take a look. This one for C, we're getting an eight meter head start. Okay, just like that. And we're going half as fast as Jamie. So let's see, where, where's Jamie? Jamie's going two, me uh, two meters per second, so that means we're gonna go one meter per second. So we are, I should just write that in here, right here. So one meter per second, and it was an eight meter head start. So let's do it. So one meter per second, so here's one meter per one second. One meter per second, one meter per second. Ooh, we're passing up uh, whoever's blue, Liza. Do we pass up anybody else? Oh, wait, no. Jamie passes us right here. Darn it. And 
again. Oh no, right here. What happens here? A's, A passes us here, just barely. Oh, it's, it looks like, oh, look, it's a photo finish, but it looks like A's a little bit before C. Finishes a little bit before C, sad days. That's why it's really good to be accurate on these ones. And um, I like to put the slopes all the way up just because sometimes if you only do the slope for a couple of them and then just draw the line, you might not be very accurate, right? And this one, that would be very important to know. All right, so here is, so the black one is C. So it looks like um, Jamie so far is in first place, A is in second place, and C is in third place. Now here is the determining factor here. Let's take a look at D, okay. D is in orange. So it says you start at the start line and catch up to lies in four seconds. Okay, so we're gonna have to figure this out. So we start the start line just with green. So me and us in green are the only ones, well, technically uh, Jamie's there too, uh, but in Jamie just waits for two seconds, just it's a dig in, right? <laughs> He's like, I don't even need to start on time. I'll still beat you all. <laughs> all right, so we get there uh, to Liza. Where's Liza? Liza is the blue. And we get there in four seconds. So in four, so here's the fourth second right here. Oh shoot, there we go. So what is that slope? So that looks like we're going 11 seconds in four, no, 11 meters in four seconds. So I can't reduce that. So I'm gonna just, just say that 11 meters in four seconds. And I start at zero because, you know, I, we didn't, I say I, but I mean we, whoever, whoever D is, right? Um, that's that's a zero, so because they start at the starting line as well. So I'm gonna have to go another 11 seconds in four, seconds. so 11 meters, I mean. So one, two, so I'm at 11, so that should be at 22. So 22, ooh, in four seconds. Oh, you guys see it, but, oh, darn it, I don't need that point right there. <laughs> Duh, don't do what I did. So we go 11 up and then four to the right. Right, um, that's what we would do. Because if we went for just 11 meters up, but the seconds stay the same, that means I literally like wormholed, right? I like vorped there. <laughs> that I'm both at 11 meters away from the the starting line and 22 meters away from the starting line. That's not possible. And so don't forget to, you have to go over four seconds because that took me four seconds to do those 11 meters. Okay, and I'm still not at, so I'm gonna go another 11. So one, two, three, four six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So maybe about right there and then go over four. So maybe there, I'm just trying to eyeball it. So I can make some straight lines here. So let's try this out. Let's see how straight my lines can be. Okay, that started off okay-ish. Oh, but look, Ooh, okay. That's supposed to go through that line, but that's fine. So this is D right here. Looks like we have a new winner guys. Right, that was a that was a teeth clencher. So here we have a y is equal to 11 fourths x. This slope was pretty looks like it was pretty steep, right? And this one was y equals instead of saying one x, we can just say x uh, because it is assumed that there's a one in front of it. Remember, and then plus eight. If you want to put a one there, you totally can, but we don't need to. We are I already know. If you do that, I already know that you that there's a one there, so that's okay. So who's our winner, guys? Who's our winner? It's going to be, uh, our winner is going to be D. D is our winner. Yay, who came in second? Poor Jamie came in second. Maybe try, oh, keep on writing it a different way. Who finished last? Like, okay, it would be and uh, Liza, right? Who finished last? Looks like Liza's gonna finish last. Right, because that's, I can't speak. That slope is, is a lot less steep than that purple one. So yeah, Liza's gonna finish in last. And so we already won, okay. Yep, we already talked about all of that. So there we go. Now we know who won the drink.